Okay, good evening. Welcome to Twitter Math Number 10. Twitter Math Number 10. We got new markers and we're excited, right? Yes. Are you ready to learn about I? A little yes. more about I tonight? Awesome. Okay, so we've been talking about, you and I have been talking about I for the last couple of days, right? You know a little mm -hmm. bit about I? Yeah. A little bit. Okay, good. Good. So you might ask the question What is I? What is I? And or why I? Why I? Why do people study it, right? It's imaginary. It's imaginary. It's cool. It is cool. So I'm going to show you three things real quick. Three things where it comes into play. One is in physics where math is a, is a really important tool. So one reason you study I is it's a tool for, for understanding the world. This equation is called Schrodinger's equation. And it's really kind of pretty, isn't it? I, H bar, <laughs> look at all these symbols. D psi, DT, H bar squared over 2M, upside down triangle. What? Upside down triangle. E squared. I think that's a V. No, it's actually an upside down triangle. Well, oh, it's called a Laplacian. So this is an equation that describes the uh, the hydrogen atom, and it has an I in it. But hydrogen's real, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so when you solve this equation, you kind of start to begin to understand what what the electron orbits around a hydrogen atom look like. And I took this from um, oh shoot, where'd the book go? From the Feynman Lectures in Physics, which was sitting around here, I was going to show it. But, and then Richard Feynman, you ever heard his name before? No. No? He's one of the most famous American uh, physicists ever, actually. So he wrote this amazing book on quantum mechanics and talked about the hydrogen atom. And then he drew these pictures of what the orbits of electrons in the hydrogen atom look like. So that's one way why you study I, because it's a tool for learning physics. Do you like physics? Yeah. Would you like to learn about the universe and how it works? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. So let me show you another thing. Have you ever heard of something called the Mandelbrot set? Yeah, it's a fractal. Right, it's a fractal. And do you know who studied the Mandelbrot set? A Mandel Mr. Mandelbrot? Yeah. Is that a new marker? Is that a new marker? Oh, shoot. Can you give me another marker? I thought this was one of our new ones. Uh, pause, pause, pause. pause. Yeah. Okay, so let me just try to quick, quickly draw the Mandelbrot set. It's got some shapes up here, then a circle, and then it's kind of a almost like a heart-shaped thing. It's got some fuzziness on top, right? I can handle that. Yeah, so, and then you can zoom in and you get really awesome pictures, right? Cool, yeah. So the Mandelbrot set says, for any point here, C, what we do is we go, we take, we, we start at zero, mm -hmm. and then we take whatever number we have, we'll call it Z squared, and we add C, and that's what our new number is. So z goes to z squared plus c. So you take a number, you square it, and you add a complex number. Okay, make sense? Yeah. And you just keep repeating this over and over and over. And all the numbers that don't go to infinity, remember infinity? Yeah. All the numbers that don't go to infinity form this really funny looking set. And this was studied by Mandelbrot, and was some of the foundation work in fractals and understanding this new kind of geometry. So I comes into play right here because these are complex numbers in the complex plane. Remember we talked about the complex plane? Yeah. Okay, and one last thing that's really, to me, one of the most amazing things, and one of the things I just find absolutely remarkable, one of the neatest accomplishments in mathematics. Let's take a look at this series. One plus one fourth plus one ninth plus one sixteenth. What do you think comes next? This one twenty fifth. The squares. I'm adding up one over the squares. Cool. Cool. This turns out to add up to pi squared over six. Hmm. And the math that you need to be able to understand to know how to sum these series like this involves complex numbers. Even though all these are real numbers, right? Yeah. Hmm. I'll show you another one. One plus one sixteenth plus one over eighty one plus one over two fifty six plus one over six twenty five. The fourth powers? Yeah. This is pi to the fourth over ninety. Hmm. And all the even powers have been figured out. Everyone or somebody knows what they are. In fact Euler figured them all out. Using complex numbers. Hmm. But you know what? Nobody knows how to sum up the inverse cubes. One, over, 1 plus 1 over 8, plus 1 over 27, plus 1 over 64, plus 1 over 125. People know that it's some number, 
But no one knows how to describe that number. Mm, are we using a, a, a number? It's just some number. Well, if you think of pi as being about 3. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this would be 9. 6 is about 1 and a half. Pi is a little bit bigger than 3. 3 to the 4th is 81. It's going to be 5 pi cubed over something. Yeah, but it's some, nobody knows. Isn't it? But, so if you solve this problem, you'd be, you'd be like a famous mathematician. Yeah. Cool. So even just with real numbers, learning how to sum up things. So I is a really important concept in, theor in theoretical math like this, which is just pure theory. In really interesting applied math, like the Mandelbrot set, mm -hmm. and in physics, where in quantum mechanics and in general relativity, which describe how the universe works. So I is super important. Yeah. Like that? Yep. All right, good job, guys. Good job.